Okay, welcome to part one of a two-part video extravaganza called Defending Against a Pepper Spray Attack. In this part one, we'll just have a little legal lecture, and uh, the, the concept behind this lecture is that if you are attacked with pepper spray, what are your legal options? Because understand that universally courts have determined that the use of pepper spray is not a deadly force attack. And consequently, your use of deadly force to stop a pepper spray attack would likely not be justified in pretty much any court of the land if those are the only two circumstances, the only two conditions. What we need to be able to do as the responsible, educated armed citizen is to understand under what circumstances you might be able to employ deadly force to stop someone who is attacking you with pepper spray. This subject came out of an incident recently where a... In fact, let me just read this to you, okay? On October 11, 2020, 30-year-old Matthew Dolloff, a Navy veteran who was ostensibly working as a private security guard for a Denver news channel, shot and killed 49-year-old Lee Keltner, who was discharging a riot control canister at Doloff when Doloff fired one shot, striking Keltner in the head and killing him. Doloff was arrested at the scene, and despite his claims of self-defense, he was arrested by Denver police and now faces murder charges. Okay, we certainly don't want that to be you. And uh, whether or not Doloff is innocent of the charges of murder by reason of self-defense or whether a jury will convict will be up to, uh, up to the facts of the case as they come out. And I'm not going to opine on that particular situation because I don't know all the facts. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use that as an example to explore the different issues involving use of pepper spray in self-defense versus use of firearms against someone who is attacking you with pepper spray. First of all, a little background. Uh, pepper spray is an oleoresin capsicum uh, solution suspended in an alcohol-based carrier, put in under pressure, and then uh, put into small two or four ounce canisters, sometimes even a one ounce canister. And then the idea is you use it like a, a can of hairspray to stop someone who is, uh, who is threatening attack or threatening use of force against you. It was primarily designed to be a replacement for the brand name Mace, which did not involve any pepper, but instead had some, uh, some chemicals that were designed around uh, uh, military and police tear gas. And so when you hear of someone being maced these days, it's really not mace, it's pepper spray. Pepper spray is designed to cause extreme pain to mucous membranes, to cause the eyes to shut and you not being able to voluntarily open them, uh, to cause a burning sensation, a pain to your skin, and if inhaled, to cause shortness of breath, giving the person who has been exposed to pepper spray a, uh, a sense of not being able to breathe. What's interesting is that despite the manufacturer's claims, it doesn't necessarily cause instant incapacitation. I've been teaching the use of pepper spray for almost 30 years now. I've been certified by four different certifying bodies as a pepper spray instructor. And in all this experience, and having sprayed a couple hundred uh, people during our training courses, no one was ever instantly incapacitated. Typically, it takes about two to four seconds before the person's body and their mind recognizes that they are in extreme distress, and then they're unable to 
uh, to basically function uh, very well because of the pepper spray. So that's the first thing we want to dispel is that myth that it causes instant capacitation. It doesn't. Anyone you sprayed with pepper spray would probably have two to four seconds to carry out an attack before their body shuts them down. There are different types of pepper sprays. We'll talk about those on part two. Uh, but basically they talk about foggers, streamers, and foam or gel. Uh, and that's important to know because how you react to a person threatening you with pepper spray will be somewhat dependent upon the type of pepper spray they're using. In the Doloff instance, he was attacked with a riot control can of pepper spray, which is totally different than the little one ounce palm held one that you squirts out a little squirt gun type, uh, you know, massive projectile. So when we're talking about use of pepper spray, uh, in self-defense, it's important that you be trained in its use uh, because you need to know uh, how to employ it. But it's also important that you understand the effects of pepper spray against you. So I strongly recommend that you get seek out some training and make sure that, that training includes exposure to, pe to pepper spray under a controlled, safe environment. In the hundreds of times that I've sprayed people and then subsequently decontaminated them, no one has ever been injured. Uh, we've never lost anybody uh, due to the effects of pepper spray. And in fact, uh, I do not believe that there has been a case directly attributed to pepper spray where a person died because of it uh, in all the times that's been used, hundreds of thousands of times over the course of the last 30 years or so. Uh, there has been a few cases where the coroner or medical examiner uh, who was performing an autopsy on someone who had been sprayed by police and then later died in an in-custody death situation uh, attributed the death uh, to, uh, in, in part, to being sprayed with pepper spray. But typically it, result, it came from an excited delirium uh, situation and that's a whole nother, nother thing to look at. Are you justified in shooting someone who is threatening you with pepper spray? To answer this question, we need to take a look at several issues or several factors. First off, what is the nature of the threat? Is it a public disturbance situation? Are you caught up in a riot where people are indiscriminately spraying pepper spray? Is, a, is it an attack directly against you? Is it a threatened robbery or a threatened rape attack? Or has the person been previously been violent and now they're using pepper spray to continue their violent behavior? What is their ability to disarm you if you are caught up in the effects of pepper spray? I'm six foot three, 250 pounds. I likely could defend my gun even af be after being sprayed with pepper spray against someone half my, or half my size. Okay. But what if it's two people who are attacking me after being pepper sprayed? There is a totally different situation there, and so I don't know if I could, if I could defend my gun. I may have to shoot them to get them to stop attacking me. Do you know that they are armed besides uh, the, the can of pepper spray? Are you with a group of people? Are there other people that can assist you if you're contaminated, uh, but they're sitting there that they can help you out? So those are answers, or those are issues that you you need to be thinking about. Uh, if you shoot someone who is attacking you with a can of pepper spray, then you are very likely going to answer for your uh, use of deadly force. You're going to answer, of course, to the police or prosecutors. You may have to answer to the grand jury. And in a, uh, in a likely scenario, you're probably going to be prosecuted and have to answer to the jury. How well you can articulate why you had a reasonable fear of death or grave bodily injury 
when you pull the trigger on someone who is just threatening you with non-lethal force is really going to depend upon, uh, upon what you know at the time. Uh, most states, if not all states, allow a person to testify in their behalf in a self-defense case and educate the jury as to your mindset. Uh, knowing all that the defendant knows and seeing all that the defendant sees. I know what pepper spray does to me. And in fact, right now we're going to we're going to shift to a clip of me being pepper sprayed about 20 years ago where we were still experimenting with the use of pepper spray for self-defense. And I wanted to see if I could actually, after taking a full hit of pepper spray, be able to employ my firearm to effective use against uh, simulated attackers. Okay, anytime. Okay, what did you see during that clip? In fact, if you're sadistic, you probably went back and watched it two or three times. But uh, what you saw was me taking a full hit of a, a regular police type or self-defense type uh, pepper spray. I don't know which one it was. It's been too long, I don't remember. But you saw that it took a couple, three seconds to shut me down. But then I had the presence of mind to... Uh, to turn facing where I thought the targets were. I had a couple of assistants there making sure that I didn't get disoriented and shoot one of them. And then they kind of pointed me towards the targets and I tried to shoot them. Uh, and it took me about 20 seconds for me to pry my eyeball open. To, then I could see the sights and I could get my hits. Well, that 20 seconds is a long time. I could have been killed many times over if the person possessed deadly force towards me or possessed a weapon or there's a big disparity of force. And so I know the issues involved with me using pepper spray against someone who, who was attacking me with it. Considerations to think about. If someone is threatening you, do you have any escape options? If somebody says, listen here, mother, you know what? Give me your wallet or I'm going to spray you. Can you just back up and get the heck out of there? Yeah, I know. You've got stand your ground. You don't have to retreat. But, geez, wouldn't it be more logical to retreat and live to, uh, to, to fight another day, so to speak, than to spend the next year, year and a half defending your drawing and shooting and killing the guy? Uh, just if you can get out of there, get out of there. In addition to the, the escape, uh, is there any other issues surrounding this incident? Primarily, uh, were you a willing participant in this altercation? Were you even the first aggressor? If you're the first aggressor, if you started this fight and there's enough evidence to show the, the judge that you were, in fact, the instigator, then he's going to yank the right to use self-defense as a legal, legal defense to the charges of murder or manslaughter away from you. The bottom line is you might be able to make a good legal argument for you using deadly force against someone who is threatening you with pepper spray but it would be a lot easier to simply be a witness in court against the guy who had assaulted you with that can of pepper spray. And so 
My advice to you is unless you can articulate that immediate threat to your life because he could access your firearm and kill you with it and you can articulate that he was acting in a manner that would lead a reasonable person to believe he was going to do that, i.e. actions, verbal threats, you really just need to avoid the altercation entirely. Just leave the situation if you can.